فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير السلام عليكم my brothers and sisters we have a few more days left for Ramadan perhaps two or three more fasts maybe two perhaps I just want to tell you take these days very very seriously they're actually subhanallah the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know I met a brother yesterday at the Excel Eid in uh, the iftar event in London and he was telling me I pray there's an extra day so that you know people can be more charitable and we can do more deeds and I was thinking subhanallah a lot of people are saying we hope that we just have 29 days we're done with this I'm in the UK at the moment I'm somewhere in northern England but I'd like you to know that the fasts here are very very long we just had iftar a few moments ago after a fast of more than 18 19 hours actually in fact, more than that, it was 21 hours, if I'm not mistaken, on, on, on the timing that was used. My brothers and sisters, this is not a joke. It's a month of forgiveness. If you exit this month without the forgiveness of Allah, you've lost. It's like going to the well and not drinking water when you're feeling so thirsty. It's like going to the ocean and not getting water when you needed it so desperately. I need the forgiveness of Allah, so do you. In order to achieve that forgiveness of Allah, soften your heart. Be merciful. When you are merciful, the Almighty has mercy on you. That is a powerful message. My brothers, my sisters, don't underestimate the value of the last hours of the month of Ramadan. And when Ramadan ends and the moon is sighted, that very moment is the time of acceptance of dua. Call out to Allah, ask him to grant us a beautiful Eid, ask him to accept all the fasting, ask him to accept all the extra acts of worship, whether it was a charity, whether it was standing at night in prayer, whether it was the recitation of the Quran, the dhikr or the remembrance of Allah, any other deeds, ask Allah to accept. Don't lose focus of that fact. My brothers and sisters, we have a few more hours of this month of Ramadan. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive me. If we've achieved forgiveness, we have achieved the month of Ramadan. Now there is a question, how do I know that my Ramadan was actually accepted by Allah and I've come out of it totally forgiven? The answer is very simple. If your life has changed, yes, it was accepted by Allah, which means you've achieved the broadest spiritual benefit of the month of Ramadan known as the taqwa that comes with it. But if your life hasn't changed and as soon as the moon is sighted, you go back to your bad ways and habits, it means that you have not achieved anything besides the fulfillment of a duty and an obligation, not in the proper manner, but just to get it over and done with, that should not be the case. But rather, the former should be the case whereby we have the mercy of Allah, the consciousness of Allah. My life changed. I've become a changed person. I've quit habits. Even if I've changed one or two major things in my life in order to please Allah, I know there are certain things that I've been trying to uh, quit for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to quit them. That should be the attitude. And I know that there are certain things I need to do for the pleasure of Allah. I'm going to do them. I'm going to make sure that I fulfill this come what may. That is the attitude. When we've changed even a little bit in this month of Ramadan, we would definitely be from amongst those who have benefited from the month. And we know that it's accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have changed. So my brothers and sisters, remember this. When Ramadan is coming to an end, don't become uh, relaxed and don't you know, think for, for a moment that now it's the dying moments, it's okay, I can calm down. These are the most exciting times of the month of Ramadan. This is why Laylatul Qadr was not at the beginning of Ramadan. Imagine, if it was the first few days, the first odd days, the third, say the other way around, the third or the fifth or the first of Ramadan, we would not even worship Allah towards the end of Ramadan. I thank Allah who is the all wise in his divine wisdom. He has actually prescribed for us that the time of Laylatul Qadr will be one of the last 10 nights of Ramadan, possibly more probably the odd one of the odd nights from among the last 10 nights of Ramadan, most likely one of the last few nights of the odd nights from the month of Ramadan, but we don't know for certain which night it is. So subhanallah, according to the Jumhurul Ummah, we're supposed to be searching for this night. Taharraw Laylatul Qadri. Taharraw Laylatul Qadri. 
في الوتر من العشر الأواخر من رمضان you know search for the night of of uh, uh, decree in the odd nights from the last 10 nights of Ramadan and that's what we've been doing we ask Allah to make us from among those who achieve don't lose hope if the 27th has passed trust me there is still one more night and that is the 29th and subhanallah if we see the moon on Thursday night, we will have Eid on Friday. By the will of Allah, I will be making Eid in London, in the park, at the Valentine's Park in London, with the Muslimin, friends, relatives, family, and those who are from the Ummah of Rasulullah I pray that we have a blessed day. I'm excited, looking forward to that beautiful day. We deserve the day of Eid. One quick issue that needs to be discussed. Sometimes when a death has occurred in the family during the year or in the last few months or something bad has happened, people say or think that we should not be celebrating Eid because it's the first Eid after the death of my uncle, my grandfather, my wife. My That is blasphemous and it is a sin. Eid is a day given by Allah and he, Allah instructs you to in, to take it as a happy day, a day of Eid. You have to declare the greatness of Allah and enjoy that day and ensure that you have not uh, stayed back for whatever reason it may be. It's a day that Allah has blessed us with and the Prophet ﷺ has asked us and instructed us to go out for Salat al-Eid to make sure that we are happy. We congratulate each other upon a beautiful season of Ibadah. Do not Stop the celebration of Eid because of the death of a person or because of a loss that you might have suffered through the year that is haram, it is prohibited and it's not allowed. You have to, uh, you have to declare what Allah has declared as a day of happiness as a day of happiness. Otherwise, you would be challenging Allah, going against the command of Allah and actually going against the decree of the Almighty. I would not like to be resurrected as a person who has gone against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us. So my brothers and sisters, it is a blessed day, a beautiful day. It's about to come. May Allah grant us forgiveness before we witness the day. May he make us really be happy on that day. Remember to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day of Eid. So these are beautiful words, a reminder for the last of Ramadan. My brothers and sisters, take them seriously. Strive towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these last days. Don't lower your guard at all just because it's the end of the match, so to speak. Just because it is the end of the season. No, don't lower your guard. Rather, make sure you score as many goals as you can in the last few days, even to make good intentions. I'm going to do this. I will do this. Inshallah, after Ramadan, I'm going to make sure I fast the six days of Shawwal in order to get the reward. And these days after the day of Eid, they can be staggered and they can be all at once. Uh, those days have such a great reward with them that if you were to fast the month of Ramadan and then add the six days of Shawwal, as I said, they don't have to be consecutive days. You add those six days, subhanAllah, you will achieve the reward of having fasted the entire year. And there is a beautiful explanation to that. I hope by now you know that explanation. But my brothers and sisters, you know, uh, it's not easy fasting in the UK, in Northern Europe, in the Northern Peninsula, closer to the North Pole. I can imagine what happens, subhanAllah. I'm actually here uh, fasting and I, I, I promise you it's not a joke. I think what is more serious is the issue of management of the time and the sleep and so on. But I must say that the Almighty has blessed us in a billion and one ways, subhanAllah, countless ways. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us. Uh, may Allah make it easy for every one of us. May Allah grant shifa and cure to those who are sick and ill. May Allah grant mercy to those who've passed away. May Allah help those who are suffering and struggling, whether it is with sickness, whether it is with debt, whether it is with something that they are going through that we don't know about, they know, Allah knows. May Allah help you. May Allah grant you goodness and ease. So these are beautiful, encouraging words for myself and yourselves. Remember the taraweeh for the sake of Allah, the Quran for the sake of Allah. Read it, recite it, help others, etc. And Allah will open your doors. Be charitable as best as you can. This is a month of the mercy of Allah. You want the mercy of Allah? Be kind to others, be merciful, show mercy, and Allah will show mercy to you. So this is something that is a great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's been awesome speaking to you. I hope that these words can keep us motivated. You know, just as I was feeling a little bit uh, under the weather, I thank Allah that I've got this opportunity to speak to you. It's given me the encouragement as well. Inshallah, we'll post this up on YouTube for the benefit of all. Jazakumullah khair. Don't forget us in your prayers and all those across the globe who are struggling. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.